northeastern Africa and parts of Asia, to Egypt. Egypt is split into two regions, Upper Egypt with its capital being Thebes, and Lower Egypt with its capital being Memphis. Egypt is made up mostly of the hot Sahara Desert with its only source of water being the Nile River, which ends in the Nile Delta and feeds into the Mediterranean Sea. Next, we will be taking a look at the Nile River. Nile played an important role in Egyptians' life, with one of its most important factors being its floods, which brought fertile soil for the Egyptians. This led to the Egyptians having a larger surplus, which expanded their trade. It also brought many dangers, including crocodiles and hippos. Next, we will be heading to some of the different landforms in Egypt. Lower Egypt was the Giza Plateau, which was used to build the pyramids on, so the Sahara Desert, which was used to make trade routes. Religion also played a big role in Egyptian beliefs. Egyptians believed in many zoomorphic gods, including Osiris, Horus, Sobek, and Isis. Egypt was awesome. It also brought some problems, including floods. Although they did have many good effects on Egypt, it could wipe away Egyptian civilizations, and sandstorms had a big effect on farming and could cause diseases. We're looking at some Egyptian technology. One Egyptian technology was papyrus. Papyrus was made from a plant papyrus that grew along the Nile River. It also needed a way to keep track of when it would flood, so they made the calendar. This gave them a way to keep track of time and has evolved today. Egyptians had no way to get around, they made canals. Finally, we will be taking a look at some man-made landmarks. This is the Great Pyramid of Giza, built as a tomb to Khufu. There's also Valley of the Kings, which was used to bury different pharaohs. Okay, kids, hope you enjoyed. Now get off the bus. <laughs> in your seatbelts. We are going to Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is located in the Middle East, which includes parts of Southwest Asia. Major bodies of water includes the Eastern Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. Civilizations of ancient Mesopotamia started along with the banks of two great rivers. The Euphrates and the Tigris River, which gives life in the middle of the desert. Tigris River source is Lake Hazar. Euphrates River began from f from the meeting of the Marat and the Karazu River. The people of Mesopotamia rely on these rivers to pr provide water of for drinking, agricultural, irrigation, and transportation routes. Over many years, flooding of the Euphrates and Tigris left the southern areas of Mesopotamia with the rich soil. Landforms in Mesopotamia include a valley and the land between the rivers. And the Taurus Mountains where both rivers start. Aren't they lovely? The climate of Mesopotamia is really hot and dry since it is in the middle of a large desert. This region includes many staples into the kitchen in the world including olives, figs, lemons, coffee, chickpeas, lentils, pomegranates, and asparagus. This made them great farmers. The early settlers of Mesopotamia dis decided that this land was a good place to live because they were close to two big rivers. Rivers give you fresh water to drink. People can't live without water and people can't drink salt water. Rivers give water for agriculture as well. So being near a river was most important because it meant survival. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching our trip. trip. You will be taking a trip from New Jersey to ancient China. And today we will be visiting the five regions of China. First we will be visiting the North China Plain. Let's go! Wow, the climate here is pretty normal. It's just like New Jersey weather. Anyways, here is one of the bodies of water in the North China Plain, and it is called the Huanghe River, or also known as the Yellow River. It is also known as the third largest basin area in China. Fun fact, did you know that the Huanghe River is 290,000 square miles? Anyways, the source of the Wangi River is the Bay and Har Mountains. And the mouth of the river is Bohai Sea. Wow, there are a lot of mountains, plateaus, hills, and plains here. As you walk around, you can see there are many, and I mean many people here. Well, that is because it is the most popular place in China. You may be wondering why so many people move here. So many people move here because it is very different, and there is a variety of places and weather. Speaking of weather, it is hot here in the summer and cold here in the winter, just like in New Jersey. There are many man-made areas here, but the main one is the Great Wall of China. If you don't know what the Great Wall of China is, it is a wall that is over 13,000 miles wide. Wow, that's big! 
I mean, yeah, it took over 2,000 years to build. Next is the Gobi Desert, which is also known as the second largest desert in the world. Also, the Gobi Desert is also located in the North China Plain. Also, the Silk Road, an ancient trading route, ran through the desert. Next, we have the Southeastern region, which also includes the Guangxi. The Guangxi is a great place for farming rice. And it grows on patties. Patties are also submerged underwater. The Tibetan Plateau is located in western central China. The Tibetan Plateau is rocky soil and cold climate. Now let's head to our next stop, which is the Himalayan Mountains. The Himalayan Mountains make up the southeastern border. Speaking of mountains, we have Mount Everest, which is over 29,000 feet above sea level, which makes it the world's tallest mountain. Now let's go back to New Jersey. Hello, welcome to the field trip. I am your tour guide, Andrew. We are here in the eastern region, Asia. Here in Beijing, the most significant body of water is the Yangtze River and the Huangqi River that flows 3,400 miles. They use the silt from this river to farm and plant their food. Here you can see the source of the Yangtze River, the mountains of Shanghai province of China on the Tibetan Plateau. Huangqi River starts in the northern China in the Kunlun Mountains of Shang in Shanghai province, south of the Gobi Desert. You will also see the mouth of the river is the Eastern China Sea. The mouth of the Huanghe is the gold of Bohai, near the city of Dongying. Also, the climate here in Beijing is 80 degrees to 57 degrees, and is also cloudy. Here you can find the Ixin and the Yanshan mountain ranges. The Yanshan are a major mountain range that goes to the north of the North China Plain. Also, the Xian Mountain Range is an important geographic border between North and South China. Now you can find the Tarmim Basin and the Taklimakan Desert. Lots of people come here to see these amazing areas. Something Beijing struggled with was with the flooding. There was a lot of flooding in this area, so they made patties covered with water to plant their rice. So I hope you enjoyed this. Now, bye. Let's go on a virtual field trip to ancient China. First, we need to find the continent of Asia and the region of East Asia. Significant bodies of water around China include the Pacific Ocean, which is made up of the Yellow Sea, South China Sea, and the East China Sea. The climate in China include high temperatures and heavy rainfall, usually during the summer. The source of the Yellow River is the Bainhar Mountains. The mouth of the Huanghe River is in the Gulf of Buhai, which is in the northern coast of China. A few major landforms in China are the Plateau of Tibet, Klaten Shan Mountains, and the Gobi Desert, which is 1,000 miles long. People were attracted to China because of their rich and fertile soil that's found in the Huanghe River. It's great for farming. Flooding was a huge problem because they lived near a river, so they innovated. Something that was man-made in China is the Great Wall of China. It extends over 13,117 miles. A way people in China needed transportation is because they lived near oceans, so they created boats to get where they wanted to go. The way they created clothing is because of where they lived. They had a lot of silkworms in their environment, so they created silk clothing. It was very rare because no one else knew how to make it. Hello everyone, today you are going to learn about Mesopotamia and Empire, so sit back and relax and start your brain aging, because we're going to go on an adventure from Monaki all the way to Iraq. Welcome to Mesopotamia. The continent Mesopotamia can be found in the Southwest Asia in a region called the Middle East, which includes lands around the Eastern Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. It is located between the Tigris and Euphrates River system that benefited from the area's climate and geography to host the beginnings of... Did you know Mesopotamia is formed from an ancient word meso, meaning between or middle of Tupatamas, meaning river. Situated in the fertile valleys between the Tigris and Euphrates River, the region is now home to a modern day. Mesopotamia has a hot and dry desert. Humans first settled in Mesopotamia in Paleolithic era, 5,000 years later. 
Houses formed in farming communities following the domination of animals and the development of agriculture, most, mostly irrigation techniques that took advantage of the proximity of the Tigris and Euphrates River. Did you know all rivers have a starting point where the, where the water begins its flow? The source is called the headwater, I mean all rivers, and the place where the river enters the lake, but larger river. Or, the ocean is called its mouth. It's like a body and head in the water under mountains, while yes, there's a diverse and fall into five main regions. The desert, the west of Euphrates, upper Mesopotamia between the upper Tigris and Euphrates River, the northern highlands, and Iraq. Lower Mesopotamia, that is one interesting fact, is it? Do they have cars in the past? No, uh oh. Cars didn't even exist in BC. People like us invented cars in the present but they do have a transportation they used boats and chariots in the past so yeah they didn't have cars like us that we use today its history is marked by many important inventions that changed the world including the things that we use today like math the wheels sailboats maps and writing Mesopotamia is also defined by a changing succession of ruling bodies from different areas places that seized control over a period of thousands of years. Mesopotamia didn't eat the type of food that we ate today, not like cheeseburgers or hot dogs or even eggs. No, no, no. They ate lentils, chicken peas, beans, onions, garlic, leeks, melons, eggplants, lettuce, cucumbers, apples, grapes, plums, figs, pears, dates, pistachios, and a variety of herbs and spice were all grown and eaten by Mesopotamia. By 3000 BC, Mesopotamia was taken over and now they are under control of the Sumerian people. Europe was the first city dating back to 3200 BC. It was a mud brick metropolis, built on the riches brought from trade, conquest, and featured public art. Gigantic columns and temples at its peak. It had a population of some 50,000 people. The Akkadian Empire existed from 2234-2154 BC under the leadership of Sargon the Great. Kings were considered deities and the most famous of these was Hammurabi who ruled 1792-1750 BC. Sargon II lost his Chaldeans but switched to attacking Syria in parts of Egypt and Gaza embarking on a spree on a, of conquest before eventually dying in battle against the Khmerians from Russia. His son, Ashurban Dipal, is considered to be the finest great ruler of the Irisan Empire, ruling from 669 to 627 BC. He faced a rebellion in Egypt, losing the territory, and from his brother. The king of Babylonia, whom he defeated, Archibaldo, is best remembered for creating Mesopotamia's first library, in what is now Nevehen, Iraq. What? Archibaldo is also featured in multiple reliefs that portray his fragrant lion hunting activity. An impressive lion image also features in two Ashtar in 585 BC during the reign re of Nisibigathur II in fashion from glazed bricks. Want to learn more about Mesopotamia? Go to this website, History Mesopotamia. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Goodbye and have a good day. What's kids? It's time for a field trip. I'm totally not a kidnap or anything. <laughs> okay, mister. Come on, come on, Mrs. Bobby. In the bus. <coughs> China is in Asia and located in Eastern Asia, surrounded by five regions which we will now see. They are the Tibetan Plateau, Himalayan Mountains, Gobi Desert, North China Plain, and the Guangxi. Rivers that are in China are the Huanghe River, which is in the northern part of China, and the Yangtze River, which is in the southern part of China. The mouth of the Huangqi River is the Gulf of Bohai, and the mouth of the Yangtze River is the East China Sea. The source of the Huangqi River is the Bayanhar Mountain. 
The source of the Yangtze River is the Qinghai, which is in the Tibetan Plateau. People developed around the Huangqi and the Yangtze so they can be supplemented with fertile loess. This helps them since fertile soil can help with food production. However, the Huangqi is one of the strongest rivers which can cause trouble to people living by it. Rougher floods could cause food damage and land damage. Ancient Chinese invented something called terraces, which put crops in higher elevation, which helps protect the crops. Rivers weren't the only problem. There was also the climate in China, which caused droughts because of their dry weather. Regions also affected ancient China in a good and bad way. That is because it reduced trade and travel, but also provided protection. Wait, hold on. Who is that? <gasps> Wait, is that who I think it is? Oh my god, that's Jimmy and Timmy. I haven't seen them in so long. How are you guys? Anyways, back to the field trip. Ancient Chinese created something called the Silk Road which were safer routes for trade and travel since China was surrounded by natural barriers, which were the five regions in China. Some man-made landforms which are found in China today is the Great Wall of China, which expands to about 13,171 miles. Goodbye, kiddos. The wheels on the bus go! Welcome to our virtual field trip! Ancient China was one of the most amazing civilizations in history. Ancient China has nine regions. East Asia is the continent of ancient China. Some significant bodies of water that are found in ancient China are the Yellow River in northern China and the Yangtze River in southern China. The climate of ancient China is dry and cool in the eastern part of China. Ancient China developed around the Yellow River to the north and the Yangtze River to the south. Bayanhar Mountains is the source of the Yellow River in China and Qinghai is the source of the Yangtze River. The East China Sea is the mouth of the Yangtze and the Bohai Sea is the mouth of the Yellow River. One major landform that can be found in ancient China is the Gobi Desert. Some geographic factors that attracted people to move into ancient China are the Great Way of Farming because of losses and the fertile yellowish soil along the banks of Hanghe River. The difficulties that the environment presented for people living in ancient China during ancient times was flooding. Millions of people had been killed by flooding. It destroyed homes and crops. One man-made landmark that can be found in ancient China is the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China was built to protect their land or their territory. The Great Wall begins in the east at Shangguan and ends at Jingguan in Gansu to the west. The length of the Great Wall of China is 1,371 miles. Ancient China affected food because farming made life easier and people no longer had to travel to hunt animals, but could grow their food where they lived. Ancient China also affected clothing for both men and women. Thank, Thank you for watching our virtual field trip.